I'm tired of taking a ball up in Jesus' I'm wrapped up. I'm tired of taking a ball up in Jesus' I'm wrapped up. I'm tired of I'm taking a ball up in Jesus' wrapped up. Tired of taking. That your pastors are everything she said about us, which I, you know, I don't see it in me, but I see it. That's the way we feel about that. Uh, you are privileged to have people who are men and women of God that walk the walk and talk the talk. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Uh, they're here for because God has called them. They're anointed of God. They love you. And, yeah. and uh, we've been there all over the place. And I want you to know that when you have uh, people that are like them, that are honest and, yeah. and full of the love of God and full and full of the word of God. And yeah. The first time we ever pulled in this parking lot, 1999 or 2000, whatever year it was that we came here, my wife looked up and she said, this is a word church. Yeah. This is a word church. And a lot of churches have gone away from the word of God. Amen? Yeah. But I want you to know that you're begotten by the word. Amen? <laughs> and uh, we're honored to be here. We always are. We come here. To, we've had our lives saved here numerous times. Amen? God has sent us here and they've ministered to us and, and uh, we appreciate that. Amen? Because... They're genuine and they love us, and we so we enjoy. We I have a ball when I'm here, Amen. And I know we preach hard, and, and uh, but the words, the words like that. That's the way I am, you know. That's what God put in me, but uh, that's what it takes for me, Amen. And uh, we don't want any mediocre Christians. We don't want average Christians. We want Christians who live a life of victory, Amen. And we have a whole church world out here in America that is just walking like that, just living in sin and. And their miserable lives, and yeah, and, they're, and they wonder the sisters' testimony about healing. People don't believe in healing; they don't believe in the power of God. And, but I want you to know, He's still all those things. Amen. He's all power. He's uh, He's the healer. He's the deliverer. He's the one that it's in Him that we trust. It's in Him we live and move and have our being. And I wouldn't have it any other way. Amen. He's the only one true and living God. Amen. Everything else is false. It's all. You know, it's all religious, and there's all kinds of religions out there, but I want you to know that there's only one living God, amen? I want you to know that He lives in us by His Spirit, amen? And He's the Holy Spirit, hallelujah. He's not just some a spirit that we're talking about, but He's the Holy Spirit. And the only way you can be holy is by the Holy Spirit, hallelujah. And when you learn to walk close to Him and begin to press into Him, amen, He will begin to make you like Him. He will begin to mold you in His image, amen? And that's what we need to be. We need to be yielding to the Lord. We're living in a time and season. It's the most exciting time that, that the world has ever known. It's also the darkest time that we're moving into the dark time. But I want you to know that means that we're going to shine brighter than we have ever shown before. Hallelujah. And we're going to give all glory and all honor to the Lord because He deserves it all. Amen. We don't deserve the glory we deserve. To give Him all the glory. I can give you credit. You can give me credit. But He deserves all the glory. Because He's the glorified King today. Amen. Just the other day we was uh, preaching over in the camp in Virginia. And, and the Lord opened the door and blessed us. And we had a great time there. The Lord has spoke a word to me. And He spoke the word to the congregation. That this, there's been a major shifting in the realm of the Spirit. There was a shift made. And I want you to know something. When God speaks about a shift, something happens in the realm of the Spirit. Amen? And when something happens in the realm of the Spirit, it begins to manifest in the flesh, in our natural man. And I want you to know that since that time, uh, since those few nights ago, uh, I want you to know that I have felt and I know in my spirit that God has made a major shift inside me. And that He wants you to realize today that He wants to change you from where you are to a new place, from glory to glory. God never wants you to stay the same. He wants you to continue to change and get deeper and deeper and deeper in Him. Amen. I want you to realize something today. God wants you to understand that you can go as far and as deep in Him as you so desire. Amen. Hallelujah. That's the greatest thing I love about the Lord. Nobody can stop you from pressing in to His heart. Amen. Nobody, and I like this, promotion comes from the Lord. Hallelujah. And whenever you uh, press into God, no matter how long you've been serving the Lord or how little you've been serving Him, but if your heart is fixed on Him today, God is going to revelate you into 
Hallelujah. I love the scripture. It says that if you delight yourself in Him, He will give you the desires of your heart. Amen. And folks, I don't know about you, but when you uh, delight yourself in the Lord and you begin to desire the things of God, He will begin to bless you in those ways. Yes, Hallelujah. I like the blessing of the Lord. Amen. Men, can He praise on you? I love the blessing of the Lord. Amen. And I thank you. I thank the Lord today that God's been pressing upon my heart. And I'll read some scripture here in a minute. Maybe we'll get around to it. But we realize today that God is seeking men and women to come after Him with all of our heart, soul, mind, body, and strength. And I don't know about you, but I don't want to miss anything that God has for me today. Do you? I want to press into the God, to the Lord, and say, Lord, help me to not miss anything. Lord, I want, I want you, Lord, to be pleased with my life. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And I tell the sister here when she goes back to New York, hallelujah, God's the same in New York as he is in Tennessee, hallelujah, and take those deposits that God's put in your heart and just begin to pass them on and let, and let them drop all around your family. I just declare the word, Lord, you don't have to, I try to cram Jesus in their heart, you just, I distribute the glory of God and let God do his work in yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. God's looking for men and women. Are you ready? I want to, I'll read a scripture here, Matthew chapter 10. This is, I read a scripture the other day and I felt really led strongly this morning that I should read it to you again because God is looking for a total commitment to Him. Amen? Amen. Amen. God is looking, listen, the Lord had spoken a word to me the other day, prioritizing, and God wants us to get our priorities back in order and get our houses in order to a point to where we say, Lord, uh, you're no longer just hanging around where I, I just say I'm a Christian. The Lord, I'm in my putting you right back on top where you belong, Lord. You are number one in my life. It's no longer a church. I'm just a Christian when I go to church and I live like the world out there uh, the rest of the week. But I'm going to live for Jesus every day of my life because I'm committed to Him today. Yes. Hallelujah. Listen, our struggles will come as a Christian when we just we live half, half, haphazard lives. We... We, uh, you know, we live, we get out there and we just forget about the Word. We forget about uh, worship. We forget about everything else. We get our mind and our life focused on the things of the world. And then we lose that focus with God and we're just living these defeated lives. But I want you to know that greater is He that is in us than He that is in the world. But that only happens when you yield to the God of the Bible, amen, the God of the universe. And say, Lord, I want you to rise in me. I want the world to see you in me today. Hallelujah. Amen. Don't you love the power of God? I love the power of God. Amen. I wouldn't serve no old dead God, would you? Hallelujah. No. People are serving dead gods all over the world. Amen. And here in America, but I, I serve the true and living God. Yeah. Matthew chapter 10. Hallelujah. Verse 37. This is a God that requires your undivided attention. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. This is a God that we serve. That is, he, he requires... The Lord is not just uh, asking you and I to uh, yield to Him and become His disciples. The Lord commands us to do it. Amen? Yes. He says, if you're going to uh, come after me, you've got to deny yourself and pick up your cross and follow me. Why does He say that? He says that for your own good because He wants to empower you to live a life of victory in Him so that you can let the world show, show the world that our God is alive and well. And if they will just turn from their ways into Him today, they can be saved and not only be saved, but they can live a life of pleasing Him and make it all the way to heaven right. when this life's over. Thank you, Lord. It's time for the mediocre Christian part of our life to be burned up and cast out. Amen. Lord, I want to live in victory. Lord, I, I do not want the devil to defeat me in my life. Because Jesus defeated that way, man. Yes. The blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin and all unrighteousness. He leads us in truth. The Holy Ghost will lead us in what? Truth and righteousness. And when we begin to walk after Him, He is telling us that, listen, I no longer have to be beaten down by the devil. I no longer have to live a life of poverty. I no longer have to live a life of not having any healing in my body, in my mind, my spirit. I can live because Jesus lived. And because He lives, I can live also. And I can live the way He lived because He empowered me to do it. Yes. Hallelujah. The world's teaching this hyper grace that you can live any way you want. And live in sin and do all you want, but God's grace will just take care of it. I want you to know something. They're, they're taking the Word of God out of context. And they're, uh, they're making... I want you... I want to say something to you here. And I want you to get this in your spirit. Grace is not a license to sin. It's the power to overcome sin. Amen? It's not a license to sin. It's the power to overcome sin. Amen? And where sin abounds, grace does 
much more about. That means that God has empowered you to overcome sin, not live in sin. Yeah. Not to justify your sins. Not to live a life that's just like the world and then you you run to God and ask Him to forgive you. No, the, the power of God, the grace of God empowers you to say no to sin. Right. Yeah. Hallelujah. Woo. Amen. That's good preaching right there. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. I amen to myself. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. We need the Word of God preached. Amen. amen. I'm not after your billfold or after your jewels or your riches or anything else. And neither are your pastors. They're here to preach the Word of the Lord. Now, there might be some out there that are, but folks, they're on the wrong track. We're on the right track. Amen. Yes. We're preaching the Word of truth because the truth will make you free. Yes. And we want you to be free in your life so that you'll be able to free other people. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. I commend you for going to New York and bringing your sister here and getting her delivered. That's what we're about. Hallelujah. And that's what that's what being a disciple is. That's what being a fisher of men is. It is like, Lord, we're not going to let her die in her sins. We're going after her and deliver her in the name yes. of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And God wants His people to begin to realize we got to get Him back. Number one. Amen. Yes. Amen. Lord, I want you number one in my life. I want you. Totally, I want you totally every the focus of my life. And Lord, if I focus you number one, you'll take care of everything else. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Amen. When I first got saved, when I was a teenager, and you know, I got a few people in my family. You all know I come from a pretty big family, but when I got saved, my focus was on the Lord. Man. I fell in love with Jesus. Man, I knew my life was changed. Amen. My heart, he, he came down and done surgery on me at the altar, took my old heart out, put a new heart in, and I began to feel the love of God like I'd never known before. I got up and I looked at things, my eyes were different. I saw things differently. Why? That was a, that, that was a supernatural miracle that God done in my life. He saved me. Changed, he, the old man was buried. My new man was uh, made alive in me. And when I got up, I was a new dad. Yes. Amen. Amen. Why aren't people having that experience anymore? Because we're coming up and we're just confessing a little prayer and we're not believing in our heart. We're not believing in our heart. He said, if you believe in your heart, what did you say the other night? Believe in your heart and you confess it with your mouth. Amen. That confession is made into salvation. Salvation covers it all. Amen. It covers your, your, your salvation from being lost to being saved. It, it, it takes care of your healing. It takes care of your deliverance. It takes care of your uh, finances. It takes care of everything because it's all in the covenant of God. Amen. Amen. He made a covenant with us. God will not. Go against his covenant. He will not. He's a God of truth. He keeps his covenant whether you keep it or not. Amen. He's a God of covenant. He's a God of uh, he, he Listen to this scripture here. Remember that scripture? Well, remember what the Bible says? I'm a jealous God. Did God say that? I'm jealous. Are you jealous of your wife and your husband? You should have a little bit there. Come on. Come on. Well. You know, man, start looking at your wife and go, excuse me. That's my woman. Get your eyeballs off her. Hallelujah. You better have a little bit of it in there. Amen. 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 And begin to realize, come on, I'm talking about God says, I'm a jealous God. I got to come first or I don't come. Amen. I got to come first in my life. You got to come first. God has got to come first in your life or he, he's, don't take second seat to anybody. God does not. He does not. Amen. Amen. So when you exalt your wife and your husband and your kids and your job and your career and everything else in front of God, God's saying he's not there. Amen. And you're calling on God and all of a sudden hell breaks loose in your life. Oh God, what's, why is this happening? All this happening. I'm telling you it's happening because we've opened the doors up. We've opened the floodgates up for the enemy to come in. Yeah. And because we have not kept God number one in our life, and we need yeah. to begin to exalt him and say, Lord, I, I forgive me. Lord, I will keep you first in my life. Yeah. And then when the enemy comes in like a flood, he will raise a standard up against him. Hallelujah. Oh. Because you're living for God. You're loving God. You're not playing the game. You're living for Jesus because you love him with all your heart. Yeah. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. He that loveth father or mother more than me, 37 Chapter 10, verse 37. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. That's a pretty strong word. Yes, it is. I told him the other day, I was reading this scripture, I said, that's, 
When I first got saved, I read that, and I thought that was pretty tough. Thirty-some years later, I read it, it's still pretty tough. Amen? Still a pretty tough word. How do you overcome it? By the blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. By the love of God. Amen? Because when I realize if I love God more than I love anything else, He gives me more love for my wife. More love for my kids. More love for my fellow man. Because if he's number one, he's the God of love. And when he fills us with his love, we have the ability to do things that we've never been able. Hey, man, I, I can love people I've never been able to love before. And your family's right there on top, right? Hey, man, some of them so unlovable. But God gives you this ability to love them no matter what. I don't mean I like them, but I love them. Amen? There's some of them I don't like. Amen? It's true, hallelujah. Amen. Amen. But I love him, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter, and that brings it right down where the rubber meets the road. Mother and father, my mom and dad's already in heaven, so that takes care of that one, hallelujah. They're already taken care of, right? Amen. Now, he that loveth son or daughter, now my son, I got sons and daughters, don't you? Amen. Got grandkids? Amen. He that loves a son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Amen. So what's the, what's the point Jesus is making? He's saying if you'll just totally dedicate and commit your life to me and keep me number one, I'll take care of all this other stuff, all the order. Yeah. This is God's chain of command, amen, yes, to is. love God first, hallelujah. Yes. And he begins to put things in order after that right there. But you've got to keep the commander-in-chief out there. He is number one. He, he is number uno. You've got to honor him first of all. And, folks, that's why promotion comes from him because he's the boss, hallelujah. He made the rules. He made, he made all the regulations. I want you to realize today that if you'll just trust him, he will lift you to places you've never been because he desires to bless you. Yes, he does. Hallelujah. I like to be blessed, don't you? Yes, yeah. Amen. I like to be blessed. Praise God. And he that taketh not his cross and follows after me is not worthy of me. What's your cross? It's your responsibility to God. The cross is your responsibility to God. You are responsible daily to pick up your cross. What's that? To say, Lord, this day, Lord, I'm committed to you. I'm committed to your word. I'm committed to pray. I'm committed, Lord. To do whatever you say for me to do, that's what I'm going to do today, Lord. You are responsible to the Lord, not my own plans first, not my own ideas, not my own motivations, but Lord, what is it you want for me to do? And when you find that out and you're committing day by day, you're walking according to the will of God. And when you do that, God brings the blessing of the Lord in your life and helps you to be able to be equipped so that you'll be able to minister to those around you today. Amen. Hallelujah. That's what God wants. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's exciting times. Amen. It is. It's glorious times. And when we flip over here real quick, let me. He that findeth his life shall lose it, and he that loses life for my sake shall find it. Amen. Dan's dead. He died August 11, 1977. There's a tombstone at his grave. The old man's dead. Does he try to get out of that grave? Yes, he does. Amen. Does he try to rear up and try to kind of come in and make havoc in my life? Yes, he does. But. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Amen. Yes. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me because what? I'm depending on the power of God. Paul told the people in Corinthians, see, I'm not coming to you with enticing words of man's wisdom. I'm not coming to, I'm not coming to uh, display all of my, my, uh, my own achievements and all that I've done. He said, I come to you in the power of the Spirit. Amen. Yeah. It's going to take, and we know that it takes the power of God to destroy the yoke of body. The anointing will destroy the yokes that are binding your lives and binding the world. And they need to see that God is a God of power today. Yes. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. You see, the world's teaching... And the church, the church is even buying into it about, you know, all the, the different sins that we, the Bible calls sin. And, you know, we got names for them. We put it in a social, you know, a package to where we name it so that it's a, you're born like this and, you know, this has happened in your life. But I want you to know something today that God is the answer to sin. Amen. Yeah. He's the answer. He's the only answer to sin. Amen. And when you begin to repent and receive the blood of Jesus, he cleanses you from all sin. Hallelujah. Yeah. And when he cleanses you from sin, you're no longer walking in that sin. Yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Yes. And if you're walking in sin and living in sin, you need to repent. Say, Lord, forgive me. 
Lord, let the blood of Jesus cleanse me and he will come and do it and he will make you free from that sin. Hallelujah. Well, brother, I'm struggling with it. We struggle with it because we won't let go of it. We won't let go of it. Yeah. Amen. I tell people all the time that I talk to and they say, I'm struggling with this, struggling with that. I say, listen, once you ask the Lord to forgive you of it and he cleanse you from it, you've got to let go of it and let it go. And don't go back and pick it up, but let it go and begin to walk in newness of yeah. life. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. I like being free. I don't know about you. Yeah. Hallelujah. And I, I, I think that, you know, we, we do, we... We honor and we appreciate all of our veterans and all of our brothers and sisters that have served to keep our nation free. Jesus did it for the entire world. Yes. 2,000 years ago on the cross, he shed his blood that you and I can be free to live free so that we can fight against evil, so that we can yes. live a life and say, Lord, us for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. We will not bow down to the idols yes. or the devil. We will not yield ourselves to any enemy, but we will yield to you, Lord, and God will give us victory over all of our enemies. Yes. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We're not no little wimpy church that's going to be run over by the devil, are we? No. Amen. Right. We're a glorious church, hallelujah. Yeah. We're a Joe army that's been raised up, amen. Yeah. And we're going to leap over walls. We're going to uh, destroy the works of the devil because that's what Jesus came to do. Yeah. And he said, the things that I do, greater things than these shall ye do. And if he said, I come to destroy the works of the devil, what are you and I going to do? We're going to destroy the works of the devil. Yeah. Hallelujah. We're not afraid of the devil. Amen. Hallelujah. When we're walking, we're, when we're in the glory of the Lord, we can do anything, praise God. It's when you step outside that realm yeah. of the Lord is when you get yeah. trouble. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. When you think you can do it on your own, amen. On. You're no match for the devil on your own. But I tell you what, you can do anything when you got Jesus on your side. Praise yeah. God. Yeah. When the Holy Power, Holy Ghost of God is within you, amen. When that explosion comes out, the enemy must flee. Hallelujah. Yeah. Sister Jane Louder prophesied this whole vision the other day of the lion of the tribe of Judah coming down through the middle of the congregation. And when the lion of the tribe of Judah roars, I want you to know something happens. The enemies scatter, hallelujah. They scatter because they can't stand in the presence of an awesome God. Hallelujah. Listen, when Solomon was dedicating the temple, when the glory of God fell, they fell, hallelujah. They couldn't stand in the presence of God. The glory of God, hey, it has so much power and so much anointing that the flesh man can't stand in his presence because he is so holy and so righteous. Hallelujah. Amen. We're going to see the glory falling so thick again Hallelujah. in the house of God. We're going to be able to stand up. Hallelujah. 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 When you get on the floor, you ain't going to be able to get up. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. I want you to know something tonight. That God is in control and His power is so supreme that, listen, if He wanted to, He could just put His little hand on His big hand on us and we couldn't move another uh, inch in our life. But I want you to know He wants you uh, to realize that it's Him, it's in Him that you live and you move and you have your being. It's in Him that you do these things. Ooh. Hallelujah. Don't give yourself credit. I've done this and I, I'm the the reason I'm like I am because all I do know it's the reason you're like that is because of what he's done. Right. Right. Hallelujah. He gives you the ability to do all. Don't take Amen. the glory for it. Give God the glory for Amen. it. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. All right, I want to read another scripture to you. Thank you, Lord. Love the word, don't you? Yeah. That's why I like being here. I can preach hard and love it. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> That's because you've been trained, amen. <laughs> I know, see, it gets us fidgety sometimes. I, I sit in the seat sometimes, and, and uh, you know, I like, that's what takes the move me. I like, you know, when I was a kid, I used to tell me, I told me the other night, when I was a little kid, I was an angry little fella, and mom used to whip me with those willow switches. And you know what those are? They draw the blood out of your legs, you know? And I tell this, I, I say this because it's kind of good with the message, but. And blood come out of my legs, and I tell them, that don't hurt. That don't hurt. It did hurt. I lied. It did hurt. Amen. But I tell mom, that don't hurt. You know, and, and uh, blood I looked down, and man, I, I was hurting. You know, I hurt. And she'd say, I'm telling your dad when he, he gets home. And that hurt. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Dad didn't use the will of switches. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, I want you to realize something. We've got to come to a point in our life where we begin to fear God again. Yeah. And you know, I know we, I know the Bible does say we're the friend of God. He does say that, right? Amen. He calls us friend, but we call him Lord. Yes, yes. He, we call him Lord. Yes, we do. 
It's not me and him just tiptoeing through the tubes together. It's not that's not how I look at God. You might look at him a different way. I look at God and he treats me different. I, sometimes, you know, I, I didn't understand anything but when they grabbed me by the arm or something, you know, when I was growing up. When dad grabbed me by the arm, I knew, you know, so listen, we gotta learn to honor God and have respect for him again. And not think, well, it doesn't matter what I do, God will forgive me. That's the wrong attitude. Amen. Amen. I should be saying, Lord, I don't want to do anything to offend you. Lord, I want to honor you. I want my life to honor you, Lord. I want to be a man of integrity of holiness, Lord. Lord, if I do anything, I want to fall on my face and ask you and beg you to forgive me because, Lord, you are so holy and righteous. Amen. We've got God today like some 60s hippie. Like he just, yeah, that's the way the world just picks him. He's not like that. He's God. He's the Holy One. Yes, he's the righteous God. And we need to begin to see Him that way again. And begin to say, Lord, I want to honor You with my life. I want, Lord, I want my life to be a reflection of who You are today. Yes. Amen. So all those little things you're doing when nobody's around, when you're by yourself, or you're at work, and you're talking to you know, I work construction, so I hear, I hear people say, well, the person's got their own job. I've heard them cuss worse than the people on the job. And, and they, they say, oh, I was a construction job. And, uh, you know, you know me, I, <laughs> listen, the sinners out on the job side don't even talk around me like that. You know, I tell them, listen, I don't put up that cussing stuff on the job side. So you, I don't want to hear it, so I ask you to respect that. You know, they do. They do. And... And people say, well, you can't change them sinners. Well, you can let them know that there's some boundaries, amen. Yeah. Let them know there's some boundaries. They'll say, listen, my ears don't want to hear that kind of stuff. Right. And uh, make them realize that, listen, uh, we, I serve God, and God don't want to hear that stuff either. Right. Amen. Right. So we need to clean up a little bit, amen, in our lives. Right. I ain't preaching on your habits and your hobbies. I'm preaching on sin. <laughs> amen. Hallelujah. If I want to preach on habits and hobbies, I'll do that too. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Because we need to line up with the Word of God. Yeah. Amen. We need to begin to examine our lives and begin to say, Lord, help us. And we'll begin to say, Lord, I want to honor you with my life. I want, to, I want you to be number one. I want my priority to be in order. So, Lord, that you are on the top of the list. And when God's on the top of the list, my life will change. Amen. It will change because I want to please the Lord while not please anybody else. I want to please the Lord Amen. and honor Him. And why would I want to act like that on the job? Why would I want to act like the world? I'm, I've been delivered from that. Amen. I want them to see a difference in me. I want them to see that God changed me from that. I don't do those things no more. Amen. I ain't going out and get a beer with the guys. I don't drink that stuff. Man, I, I, my mama called that devil's urine. <laughs> I like that, don't you? Yeah. That's right. I like that. Amen. I tell people like that all the time. You don't need to be going out. If you want to party, come to church. Hallelujah. Amen. Come to church and worship Jesus. Be real men. Be real women. Say, Lord, oh, we're going to come and we're going to worship you with all of our hearts, minds, soul, body, and strength. Amen. Hallelujah. We need to clean it up. Amen. The reason you talk like that with your mouth is in your heart. Come on. That's right. Come on. You get your heart cleaned up. You've got a heart problem. Whenever something negative comes out of my heart, my mouth, that's coming out of my heart, I've got to repent of it. Amen? Amen. I don't care how long we've been on the way, there's sometimes that it gets you built up in there. And, and listen, I've had some hatred. When my daughter was a teenager and boys started coming around, I, I'm telling you, I had a little bit of murder in my heart. <laughs> I did. Hallelujah. And boys would come up and ask me, they could take my daughter, and they say, why? I said, I don't like you. <laughs> Amen. I would. I'd tell them, why don't you like me? I said, well, you're... Listen, look at me. I said, you're drinking, you're smoking, you're cussing. I said, I don't want my daughter around that. I want her to, whenever she does start dating, which I wanted to be 25 or 30. But listen, I want you to know something. Listen, we got to guard our hearts and guard our minds because the enemy will try to sneak in any way he can. Hallelujah. Yes, I did. I, I have. The Bible said if you do it in your heart, you've done it. Amen. If I've been a murderer, I have. But I repent of it. I ain't a murderer no more. Amen. I have. I, I have. I have. I've had those thoughts in my mind. And those, don't laugh at me. Those you got daughters when they start growing up, you're going to feel. You're going to go through the same stuff. Amen. If you haven't already. Amen. 
And, well, how do you know like that? That You know, your daughter always says, well, that, how do you know they're like that? I said, I was a boy. <laughs> Amen. I was young once. Amen. I know how boys are. They can't hide anything because we know it. God's given us wisdom. Let me read this whole scripture to you. Thank you, Lord. I know none of you have ever felt like that before. So that's good. I mean, that's awesome that you have it. Amen. That's awesome. We do have emotions. We do have strong feelings that come over us. And there are times where we have these feelings of being overwhelmed, but that's when we learn to start yielding to the Lord. Amen. Lord, help me with this. Lord, help me. Lord, not to feel this way. Lord, help me. Lord, forgive me for those thoughts. And don't let them get down in my heart so deep that I want to, I want to fulfill them, Lord. But Lord, forgive me. And Lord, make me like you, Lord. And he will. God, can, he just supernaturally does it. Because he's awesome. And he's the only one can do it. Amen. He's the only one who can do it. Amen. John chapter 21, verse 15. So when they had dined, Jesus says to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, Lovest thou me more than these? And he said unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. And he said unto him, Feed my lambs. He said to him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonah, Lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. And he said unto him, Feed my sheep. And he said unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonah, Lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he had said unto him the third time, Beloved thou me. And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. Jesus was making a point with Peter again. We know Peter wasn't converted yet. You know, we know that Pentecost hadn't come. We, we knew the permanent conversion had to take place. But the Lord was making a point to him. Do you really love me more than you love me? All these and he, he made the same statement when he was talking to Matthew. If you love mother or father more. Remember when the one man, his family member died, and he asked Jesus, can I go back and bury him? And the Lord said, let the dead bury the, 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 bury the dead. It seemed kind of hard, but he, the point is, the Lord's saying to all of us today, no matter what's going on in your life, follow me. Follow me. No matter what you're seeing with your natural eyes, Begin to follow me with all your heart. Don't turn to the right or turn to the left. Don't run back. Amen. Sometimes we think we can go back and change our families. And, you know, when the, we've been away from our home for a long time. And a few years ago, the Lord put in our heart to go back there. We went back for a while. And we did all the Lord put in our heart. But I want you to know something. Nobody can change anybody but the Lord. Amen. God is the only one who can do that. And what you do is you plant and somebody waters, but God gives the increase. And we got to believe the word of the Lord. Amen. Amen. And listen, I want you to realize something that Jesus didn't do many miracles among his own people because of their unbelief. Their unbelief. Do you believe the word of the Lord? I want to believe like I've never believed before, don't you? I want to believe God's word. When the Lord speaks to me about something, I want to believe it. I want to embrace it. I want to accept it into my spirit so that I can see the fulfillment and the manifestation of God's glory in my life. Amen. Because people need to know that God's alive in my life. They need to see the glory of the Lord in my life. They need to see that when I'm going through hard times that I'm glorifying the Lord. I'm lifting Him up. I'm going on. I'm being faithful to the Lord no matter what. They see that faithfulness because God is faithful to us. He wants us to be faithful to Him. Will you feed my sheep? He said, will you feed my lambs? He's starting out as a process here. My lambs, my sheep. Will you do it, Peter? And, he's, and, you know, he made that statement about Peter, what was going to happen to him in his last days. And Jesus prophesied to him right there in that scripture that how Peter was going to die. Right there. He was telling him of his future in that moment right there. And he said, Peter, I want you to follow me. Follow me. No matter what's going on in your life, no matter where, what's happened, I want you to follow me. And I believe the Lord is saying that. He's, he wants us to follow him close. And this day that we're living in now, it's so easy to be distracted. It's so easy to be pulled aside and get caught up in all kinds of doctrine and all kinds of untruth and, and things that are just seasoned with a little truth. And it, it'll just give you a little uh, little bit to lead you into something that will lead you away from God's Word. Right. Lord, I seen this vision the other night, and I seen the Lord, and I told Pastor about it. And I seen, you know, a lever on a railroad track. You know, when they pull the lever, the tracks shift, and the train goes in a different direction. I saw the Lord do that. 
He pulled the lever and I saw the track shift and I saw the train shift into another direction. The Lord said, I've changed the direction of the church. I've changed the direction of your life. Amen. And now sometimes it seems like we were going on that same track around the mountain just like the children of Israel. But the Lord said, no longer are you going to stay on that same track, but I'm moving you. I'm shifting you in the right direction. You're on the right track. Amen. Amen. I want to encourage a lot of you. You've been struggling with, Lord, is this right? Am I doing the right thing? What's going on? And listen, the Lord's getting us on the right track. Amen. He's getting us in the place we need to be. He's, he's, uh, he's bringing clarity and vision. He's bringing clarity. He's bringing knowledge and wisdom into our lives so that we won't be walking around like blind folks, but we'll be able to see and we'll be able to hear clearly. I believe that the miracle that happened to our sister, I believe it was prophetic. I believe that God opened her eyes to see. He opened her ears to hear what the Spirit said to the church. And her leg with the ability to walk the walk of God, the path of righteousness. And I want you to realize, oh, in that miracle package right there, I believe God is not speaking to her, but He was speaking to the church. Hallelujah. Amen. God does nothing just to be doing it. He does it because He has a reason for everything to be done. And as we're looking at those things, Lord, let me see, anoint my eyes to see. Lord, anoint my ears to hear what you're saying to me. Yes. And we need to hear me, hear with clarity, and hear yes. and begin to see with vision and purpose and say, Lord, I want the perfect will of God for my life. Yes. Amen. Amen. You know that perfect in the Bible means the mature, the mature, right? Amen. God's maturing us. He's bringing us to that place of maturity so that we'll be able to, that will no longer be babes, but will be adults in the realm of the Spirit. Say, God, I understand and I see what you're saying now, Lord. Give me the grace and the courage to step into it and walk by faith in that realm that you're bringing me into. Yes. Amen. I'm ready, aren't you? Hallelujah. Yes. I tell the Lord, I will, I, I, I make this statement, I will not miss what God has for my life. I will yes. not miss it. I refuse. Amen. Yes. And those of you that have been laying back a little bit, You've been slacking off. You need to press in right now. You need to say, Lord, Lord, forgive me. I'm going to get in this thing. I'm going to jump in head first. I'm going to live for you, God, no matter what happens, no matter what my family thinks, no matter what anybody thinks. I'm going to live for you, Lord. Amen. You've got to. Amen. Yeah, listen, I, I told this, I've told you this before here numerous times, but it might be somebody new. I'm a first generation preacher. There's never been a preacher in the history of our family. They, they, we, there's a bunch of heathens. My family, I'm telling you the truth. I'm a first generation preacher. But I'm not the last of the first generation preachers. Now my kids live for God. Amen. Yes. Now I have nephews and nieces that God is going to call into the ministry. I have, we have why? We have broke that curse. We broke that curse off of them. Listen, I come from a large family. And I was very, you know, we didn't have words when I was growing up like dysfunctional, all that. You know, we would, we didn't have Dr. Phil, and we didn't have none of the people, you know. We didn't, you know, we didn't even have a TV that worked. Hallelujah. <laughs> and we lived in a three-room house. We had no plumbing, no indoor plumbing. And that's, you see why I'm uh, way I am. See, now I, I got a reason, right? You know, I couldn't just hung my head and say, Lord, you know, I'm just so poor. They ain't growing up. A lot of you was raised poor and dirty. Who cares? Amen. 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 I decided to be, I like victory. I like to win. Amen. I don't want to lay down in the dirt and quit. I like to rise up and say, Lord, I'm going to win. I'm going to make something out of myself because I want to live for God. I want people to see that it doesn't matter where you came from, it's where you're going. Hallelujah. Amen. I can look back and I can, I can blame everybody for my problems. I look back and say, well, I didn't have it that bad. You know? Amen. It's because I was 18 out of 20 kids. I, I, I lived at the, the long end of the thing. So uh, whenever I got that, uh, that old, you know, when I got, when I was growing up, listen, I want you to know something. God, was, he can take you. I was like, you know how the, the, the prophet Samuel came and he went through all them sons. And he said, ain't you got any more sons? I'm the 10th son of 10 sons. Right. I think it's prophetic, don't you? I do. Amen. And, you know, I'm sure if the Lord was speaking to my daddy, he said, ain't you got any more sons? What do you mean? I mean, listen, there's one more, that little ruddy brat out there somewhere. Amen. Running in the woods. And he's out there. The Lord said, I'll take him. Amen. I'll take him. Hallelujah. And I don't know about you. And David was raised up to be a king. And when I got saved, I became a king. Hallelujah. Amen. And he said, I'm going to make you kings and priests in my kingdom. Amen. So I don't know 
about you. You can live the pauper's life and have that mentality if you want, but I like being a king. Hallelujah. I like being a priest in the kingdom of God. And if you want to live in that life, you've got to commit yourself to Jesus. All of it. God wants all of it. Amen. God don't want you on Monday, Tuesday, and Sunday. He wants you Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. 365 days a year. No vacations from being a Christian. Amen. When you take off and go on vacation, then you go out and do stuff you ain't supposed to be doing. No. He wants you to be saved wherever you're at. Amen. Wherever you're at, God wants you to be saved. Amen. Hallelujah. That's not too much for to ask, is it? For God to ask. He said, all the things I ask you to do, they're all reasonable. Reasonable. It's time we reevaluate our life. Try to work on your life and say, Lord, where are you in my life? How can you do that? Why? Well, God, I love God. But look at your life. Look at the structure of your life. What do you spend more time doing above God than you do for God? Begin to look at it. I mean, you can evaluate your own self. You don't have to have me do it. Let the Lord, let the Holy Spirit show you. And all the Lord's saying is, I want you to listen. I want you to lay this aside. I want you to spend a little bit more time with me. I like you to, you know, I, I've said this with me and my wife. Our next anniversary, we'll, we'll be married 30 years. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. You didn't even know that old did. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> that lady last night at dinner told, told me they've been married 44 years when she was 39 years old. I said, that's a miracle. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Listen. When we, when we start dating, I was pretty busy. But you know, I always had time to make a date. <laughs> did you? You know, did you? Whenever you, man, man I'm awful busy today, but I got to call her up and say, hey, you got a few hours so we can get together? That's what God wants from you. Hey, Lord, care if I come over and stay with you for the rest of my life? Amen. <laughs> Amen. Lord, my life, Lord, I'm so in love with you, I can't stay away from you, Lord. I can't wait for you. The pastor and them won't have to look you, look you up every five months and see where you're at. Amen. You'll be right there and you say, God just told me to come over here and do something for you. Hallelujah. Work in the church. God told me, the Lord told me to do this. Amen. When we become sensitive to the Lord, the body of Christ has come in line. The Lord showed me the, body, the unity of the body of Christ is moving rapidly. God is going to bring us together again. Amen. We're going to come to a place where it's not going to be all my agenda, your agenda, my plans, your plans. It's going to be his plans. Amen. 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 And when he begins to bring those plans together, it's going to be one great, powerful move of God that Ezekiel saw. We know that he was talking about natural Israel, but he was also talking about spiritual church. Amen. When those bones begin to live, they came together, they rose up an exceeding great army, and they walked in step. Amen. No one was out of step. They all heard the same cadence because, listen, they were marching to the sound of one voice. The voice of God. Amen? I'm ready for that. Hallelujah. I'm ready for that. I'm ready to see the glorious church arise, take our spot, and let the world look upon us and say, wow, I want to be a part of that. I don't want to go to a devil's like, do you know, listen, I want to say this to you. We know hell's not preached on much at all anymore. People don't even believe in hell. They won't, they won't say the word sin because it's offensive. Of course if it's, it's offensive because the ways of sin is what? Yeah. Death. Sin will kill you. Sin will kill you. The Bible says hell enlarges itself daily without measure. Is that what it says? It enlarges itself daily. Heaven's the same size. You hear me? Heaven's the same size. Hell's enlarging itself daily without measure. That means the majority of people who die, die lost every day. Do we even grasp that? Do we even, do we even comprehend that most people that die are going to hell? They don't have to. It's not God's will to any perish, but all come to repentance. Amen? we got to get to the place to where we are shining the glory of God and where we're so sensitive to the Lord. All the great revivals and the ones that God brought through the awakening had the heart of God so powerful that they saw people burning in hell. And they would do whatever it took. They would do whatever it took. They prayed and they fasted and they sought the Lord. And they said, Lord, my family is lost. Our community is lost. America is lost, Lord. What are we going to do? 
If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then, then I will hear from heaven. Then, only then, and he will pour his glory out and we'll see an awakening like we've never seen because this last day harvest will be the greatest harvest the world has ever known. But don't never let it go by your mind that, listen, the majority of people that you see, their obituaries in the paper, and when you see them, when, we see, when you see all these calamities around the world, I want you to know that according to the Word of God, most of them die lost. And that's not God's will. He wants them all to be saved. He wants them all to be saved. Do we? Do we? The Lord had to rebuke me on this a few times back in my life. When there were people who done evil and awful things and they kill people and they do all kinds of things. And, I, and I'd say, good, they got what they deserved. And they might have. They might have got what they deserved. We all would be in hell if we got what we deserved, right? But to have the heart of God saying, Lord, as evil as they was, you died for them. You died for them. I want you to know something today. God is bringing the awakening to we realize the only way we'll bring the harvest is in the glory. It's by the glory of God. It's not going to be by our programs. It's not going to be by our intellect. It's not going to be by what we think of. It's going to be the power of God. Yes. It's going to be the glory of God. Yes. It's going to be God's power so real that there, it'll be no name. There will be no man in the front of it. There will be nobody exalted in it. It will be God exalted. It will be Him. It will be people coming to Him. And every man's face will be the same. We will have no faces. And God wants you to realize that it's not about us. It's about Him and about getting people to Him. It's not even about getting people to church. It's about getting to Jesus wherever He's at. And then when we get them saved, we can get them in and get them disciple and trained so that we can get back out there and do the work that God called them to do. Hallelujah. Sobering time, it really is. It's a sobering message. It's sobering. It's exciting, but it costs something, folks. It costs us something. Amen. Nothing comes free. You know, we say salvation is free. Salvation wasn't free. Amen. Jesus paid the greatest price that could ever be paid. He paid the greatest price that wasn't free, but He freely gave it to you and I. Amen. Yes. Freely gave it to you and I. And, and when you get saved, your life is not free. It belongs to the Lord. Amen. You need to begin to say to the Lord, God, what is it you want from me? What is it you want me to do, Lord? And God will begin to speak to you. And he will show you. And as you come, as you get trained in the Word, as you get trained in prayer, as you get trained in the house of God, you will begin to see God's glory manifest in your life. And he will, he will raise you up and strengthen you by His Spirit. Amen. Yep. Hallelujah. And all of Military people here, you all know that when you get, you know, when you get going to the service, you don't want to stay a private. Amen? You want to get promoted. You don't want to stay in the johns or the heads or the latrines or whatever you want to call it. You don't want to clean them and be in. Listen, you want to get promoted to new places. But listen, it's going to cost you something. In the kingdom of God, it costs you your perseverance, your faithfulness, your, your heart of seeking God. Of being that place where God wants you to be. Amen. Have I been shoved out of places? Absolutely. I've had other preachers just push me out of the way and say, get out. Yeah, I don't want you around. And you go, I'm just here to help. I just want to do something. But there, there's that spirit of jealousy and greed everywhere you go. But the Lord has never pushed me out. Never. He's always said, come here, son. Come closer to me. Come closer to me. And folks, God will never push you out. If you've been rejected in your life and, you know, in your relationships and all those things that happened to you, I want you to know God has healing for all of you. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. All the things you've been through from a child up, He's the healer. Yeah. It's time that we get healed of all those things right now. It's time that we get them taken care of so that we can go forth into that new place in the Lord. And God don't want you anything holding you back. He don't want anything stopping you or slowing you down. Now's the time. This is the season. The shift has been taken. It's been made. The tracks have been taken. You're on the right track now. And when you're in the presence of the Lord, now's the time. You say, Lord, I'm tired of fighting this whole same old battle. Are you, are you tired of fighting the same old battle? Yes. Amen. Don't you want to fight a new battle? I mean, go to a new place and fight a new battle? Yeah. Amen. <laughs> new levels, new devils, they say. But listen, I don't care how many devils there is, greater is he. Yes, yes. It's in me, the he that's in the world. Amen. Don't you like a good fight every once in a while? Yeah. Yeah. I know 
this other day. I know some of you are going to be contempt here in church, but boy, when you get home, you're like, wow! <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> I can ask some of your husbands, you know, yeah, oh, you're going to see her, yeah, praise the Lord. Amen. A little warrior in there, praise God. My mom was a little woman. She was a little woman, boy, but she got mad, boy. She was like a little Benny hen, amen? A little rooster or whatever, a little hen. She was more a hen, hallelujah. And she, she could get, get it riled up there. And I, I used to think it was funny. I'd say, yeah, Mom, go. Hallelujah. Except for she's coming up to me, amen. <laughs> but we got to rise up. we got to let that spirit rise up within us, amen. Quit being timid and overcome by the devil and begin to say, I'm tired of it. No more. Jesus said he was bigger than you. And he is, amen. He defeated the devil, amen. Did he, did he defeat the devil or not? Yes. Amen. The devil, he's as a destroyed lion. He's an imitator, right? Yes. Toothless. He can roar, but he don't have the teeth in there. He's on a, he's on a leash. Amen. He's on a chain. The lion of Judah, when he roars, the enemy scatters. Yes. He lives in you by the Lord. I like what one man said. I read after years ago, but he made a statement. He said, the power that is within us is greater than all the military forces of the world combined. Think about that. The power that is within us is greater than all the military forces of the world combined. Because the power that's in you is God. Hallelujah. Amen. The power that's within us is God's power. And nothing by any means can hurt us because of the power of God that's within us. Amen. How many of you ever eat, ate anything poison or deadly or anything like that? You've been poisoned by food or anything like that? It makes you sick with a dog dog. Didn't kill you, they did it. Nothing. You eat any deadly thing, you shall not hurt you. Amen. I've ate some pretty bad food in my life. I've lied to you times too. They say, How was I? I said, That was awesome. <laughs> Listen, God's calling us today, Joe, church. He's wanting us to get all the things fixed up in our life, get our house in order. The last time I was here, you remember this message I preached about getting squared away? God wants us to get squared away, get everything taken care of in our life. And only you can do that by you turning it over to the Lord. He said, casting how many cares on him? All, all, all your cares. On him, for he cares for you. That's what he wants. And when you cast your cares on him, you're showing God that you trust him. Amen? You're showing God that you trust him. And if you're here today and you don't know the Lord, God wants you to be a part of his kingdom. Amen? He wants you to know that he died for you. Jesus died for you. Nobody else could do it. Jesus died for you. Nobody else can save you but Jesus. Amen? There's no other name under heaven whereby men must be saved but the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. So when you come, and that's why when you pray to other gods and you pray to false idols and all those things, nothing happens. But when you pray and you call upon the name of the Lord, you believe it in your heart, you confess it with your mouth, you shall be saved. Amen. Amen. And you're doing that because you you realize, Lord, I'm a sinner. I need I need you to forgive me of this. Lord, I want to be, I want to be saved. I want to go to heaven when life's over. Not only that, I want to live a life down here that brings honor and glory to God. Don't you? Amen, I do. Well, I'm wrapped up. I'm tired.